This recording is to go over what we did on Friday again as a review. We want I want to go over how to deal with a charge distance uh, density that is uniformly distributed and non-uniformly distributed in the case of a spherically symmetric charge distribution and examine what that means uh, for Gauss's law and for calculating the electric field once again in the spherically symmetric case. So first of all let's talk about how you deal with the fact that you might have a charge density rho that is distributed throughout a volume. To find the total charge contained in the volume then you would integrate that charge density over the volume where dv represents a small element of volume suitably defined. What we are going to do in this class for a spherically symmetric case is to define that element of volume as being the volume of a spherical shell. So if we take our solid sphere, define a shell of radius little r where little r is less than the radius capital R of the sphere, you want to define the volume of a shell of radius r and thickness dr. dv would be then the surface of the shell, that's 4 pi r squared, times the thickness, that's dr. Really what we would be doing is finding uh, the volume of a sphere of radius r plus dr and subtracting from it the volume of a sphere of radius r. So what we would be doing is basically 4 third pi times r plus dr cubed minus 4 third pi r cubed. And if we did this, we would get 4 thirds pi times r cubed plus 3 r squared dr plus 3 r dr squared plus dr cubed minus r cubed. Okay, what you're doing is basically keeping terms that are linear in dr. So you're keeping that term, but you're saying if dr is an extremely small uh, infinitesimal increase in length, then dr squared and dr cubed are much smaller than dr. So for example, if dr was say 0 0.01 then dr squared would be 0 0.0001 and dr cubed would be 10 to the negative 6 so they could be neglected in front of dr. So we set these two to 0 and because r cubed cancels with r cubed what you have is therefore that your little element of volume is 4 thirds pi 3 r squared dr and you can see that's just 4 pi r squared dr. So writing this as the surface area of a spherical shell of radius r times the thickness dr is basically coming from taking the difference between the volumes and linearizing it. Having done that, defined our element of volume as being 4 pi r squared dr, we can find the charge contained in a volume of radius capital R by integrating this rho dv from 0 to capital R where capital R is the radius of the entire sphere. Now if rho were constant this would be simple. You just take rho out of the integral. This is 0 to capital R times 4 pi r squared dr. So this would be just rho times 4 thirds pi r cubed or rho times the volume of the sphere. So this is for rho constant. But if rho is not constant, suppose the charge density changes, we are going to take the case where the charge density only depends on the radius. We are not going to assume it depends on the angle so far. But let's say we have rho is equal to some function of r. In particular, we can take as an example, rho is equal to rho naught little r over capital R for little r less than capital R. And we take rho is equal to 0 for little r greater than capital R. Rho is again integral 0 to capital R or rho dv. Sorry, this is not rho, but this is q. And what we have then is replacing this in the integral. Rho naught is a constant. It comes out of the integral z rho naught integral 0 to capital R of R over R dv. dv is 4 pi R squared dr as before. So this becomes 4 pi rho naught in over capital R. 0 to capital R of R squared from here and R from here. So it becomes R cubed dr. This integrates to R to the fourth over 4 from 0 to capital R. So this becomes 4 pi rho naught over capital R times R to the fourth over 4. So we can cancel 
the fourth and one factor of capital R. So this becomes rho naught times pi times R cubed and that's the charge contained in the entire sphere of radius capital R. Okay in general we would want to define this integral that I've written over here q would be defined as the integral from 0 to infinity of rho dv. What happened to the fact that this is usually defined from 0 to infinity? Well we had said that outside our sphere rho is 0. So that 0 to infinity integral basically becomes 0 to capital R only up to the outer radius of this spherical body. Okay, how can we use this to calculate the electric field everywhere? So we're going to use Gauss's law and what we want to do is find electric field everywhere. Let's begin by doing it for a point that's outside. So let's say I take a distance R such that R is greater than the radius of my spherical volume. So let's write Gauss's law as is written here. We want to write both the left hand side and the right hand side separately. The left hand side, well my Gaussian surface is just the sphere of radius little r. Because this is a spherically symmetric distribution, we imagine the electric field it produces on the surface of my Gaussian sphere is going to be uniform everywhere and pointing radially outwards. So this integral the dot product just becomes E times the area and because E is going to be constant over that area we can pull E out of the integral and just integrate over the area where the area is therefore the surface of this Gaussian sphere of radius r. So the left hand side of this becomes just E times 4 pi little r squared where little r is the radius of my Gaussian sphere. What about the right hand side? Well, the right hand side will correspond to the total charge Q contained in this volume because I only have charged up to the radius capital R. So this is going to be Q over epsilon naught. Where Q, as we saw on the previous slide, if we want to write it in terms of rho naught, it goes as pi rho naught R cubed. So if we were just to write it in terms of capital Q, E would be Coulomb's law, basically 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught capital Q over R squared, the inverse square law once again, where the charge capital Q, though it's smeared over a sphere of radius capital R, for all intents and purposes, this could be a point charge located at the center of the sphere. If we want to write it in terms of rho naught, which is constant in the definition of the charge density, this will be rho naught R cubed. So replacing this in here over the pi cancels for epsilon naught. So this is for R greater than R. So what happens when R is less than or equal to R? We once again go back to this integral and we'll take a Gaussian sphere now of radius little r where little r is less than capital R. So the charge that will matter will be the charge contained in this sphere now, not the total outer sphere. And the surface we are looking at is the surface of this Gaussian sphere. So once again when we write down the integral of E dot dA is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught, we are going to look at both the left hand side and the right hand side of this equation separately. What the left hand side becomes is using the same arguments that E is perpendicular to the surface of the sphere and is constant everywhere. We can take it out of the integral so it's just going to be E times the surface area of this little Gaussian sphere which is 4 pi r squared. The Q enclosed however is the charge contained in this. So Q enclosed is going to be the integral from 0 to little r of rho naught r over capital R times dv which is 4 pi r squared dr. So taking out the constant factors that I can take out 4 pi rho naught over capital R the integral from 0 to little r of r cubed dr and that becomes r to the little r to the fourth over 4. So I'm going to get rho naught pi over r little r to the fourth. This is once again charge density times distance cubed. What this becomes is therefore rho naught pi r to the fourth over capital. So I have e, so for r less than or equal to r, we have two powers of r here and four powers of r there. So when I simplify, and the pi's will cancel, I'm going to get rho naught little r squared over 4 epsilon naught r. So this was for r greater than or equal to r and this is for r less than or equal to r. Um, I had forgotten an epsilon naught in here. There. 
and when r is equal to r do the two expressions agree well this would give me e is equal to rho naught over 4 epsilon naught r and that expression is the same for both